Deadpool and Wolverine has been met by the fans with pretty much universal praise. I reviewed it a few days ago right after seeing it and you always worry about it when you're doing what I do that perhaps my opinion is skewed a bit positive due to the phenomenon known as hypnosis i.e. the spell of the key jangling with cameos and hilarious fourth wall breaks and references that might have temporarily captured my senses and actually the movie is potentially not as good as I thought it was but no, everybody else is still raving about the movie half a week later so so that's uh, good to know. And in case you were thinking maybe just that many people haven't seen it yet or something along those lines, guess again. Everyone and their mums has turned out to see this movie, this love letter to the old 20th century Fox proto-modern superhero movies of the 90s and 2000s that gave way for the rise of the MCU, which was built on the foundations they created. And you know what that means, don't you? Yes, Disney's getting a look at the kind of money they could be making when they don't include a bunch of woke, feminist, radical left DEI messaging and just let the boys have some bloody fun and be creative for a change. Spoilers, it's a lot. Hello, welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there? I hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. We're going to check out everything you need to know about Deadpool and Wolverine and its box office success. Yes, the movie is breaking records. Remember, uh, through all of this video, I want you to remember that this is an R-rated movie. That means it's not family-friendly. It's very, very violent and has a lot of references to adult themes. Let's just say that. Uh, so, you know, it's automatically on the back foot, but of course Deadpool 1 made headlines by being one of, if not the most successful R-rated releases back when it came out in 2016, and Deadpool and Wolverine has blown it out of the freaking water. So if you're liking the video, be kind, hit like, it helps others to find it in the algorithm, and of course don't forget to subscribe to Will of the Fans. If you'd like more news, reviews, commentary, and a rebellion courtesy of me and the Grift Force. L'Elysion Reactionnaire. Let's go to Rotten Tomatoes first and have a look at the audience score. As you probably have already seen, but it just keeps bouncing around the same numbers. We've got a complete inverse uh, of numbers, but fortunately both of them are positive numbers. The critics are giving it a 79%, which was 80% the other day. And now with four times as many reviews from the audience, when I covered it before, it was two and a half thousand. It's now over 10,000 audience reviews, the number that we actually do care about because critics generally can't be trusted. 97%, guys, 97%. Now, is it actually a 97%? No, of course not. That's the kind of numbers that should be reserved for absolute all-time generation defining movies and to be fair if this movie is something we need to define this generation then we're all in no actually yeah just about as much trouble as i thought we were so maybe it makes sense maybe this is a a, a paragon of the era that we are living in with a 97 percent because this just keeps happening every single time there's a franchise that goes straight down the toilet thanks to wokeness, leftism and diversity, equity and inclusivity, not to mention Lugabutaka themes. One thing comes out for that franchise that doesn't do all these things and instead just wants to have fun and say thanks to the fans and guess what happens? Well, you are literally looking at it right now. So anyway, let's uh, let's dive a little deeper then. Uh, Hollywood Reporter has this here and says box office Deadpool and Wolverine lands eighth, eighth biggest opening of all time, guys. The eighth biggest movie opening ever. Just take a second and let that sink in and remember terms that you've heard bandied about over the last three or four years like ooh, pre and post pandemic. Or, oh, superhero fatigue. And uh, all of those other good things that... Uh, no, no, they're not good at all, are they? All of those other blatant lies and cope that the mainstream media and Hollywood themselves have been trying to peddle as the reason for the diminishing returns when you and I know what we have always known, that it is quite simple, really. It's the DEI. It's the feminism. 
It's the woke. Once you get rid of that and you just make a bloody movie that wants to have fun with its concept. I've, I've just said it. I'm not going to keep saying it over and over again. You get the picture. 205 million domestic opening weekend. Now, you might have heard numbers like 200 million over the last couple of years. And you can't quite remember why you've heard that. Well, for example, that is about six or seven million dollars more than the Marvels made. That's right. The most recent MCU movie before this, The Marvels, the sequel to Captain Marvel, the all-female, all-the-time, all-feminist cringe fest that lost money, dramatic amounts of money because of all the reshoots and stuff before it actually came out. Yeah. This is the exact opposite of that. Makes R-rated history, it makes all kind of history. But anyway, let's get into a couple of quotes and then we'll move on to the actual data because, you know, I love me some data. Uh, it's a record-shattering $205 million at the domestic box office. That would be North America only. And uh, the first Deadpool also needs to be mentioned as the previous record holder at $133.7 million. Jeez. That's like one-sixth more. Seriously, we're like, that's the kind of what we're dealing with here. A significant, that's more than a sixth, it's like a third. It's significantly more than the first Deadpool got. And that was in 2016 when everything was fine and the MCU was doing okay, but it was, you know, it was, it was admittedly in a little bit of a lull at that point. It hadn't quite got to Endgame and, well, Infinity War yet. Uh, so anyway... The movie also shattered records for an R-rated pick on a global scale, opening to 233.3 million internationally from 55 materials markets for a worldwide start of $438.3 million opening weekend. And it has made 100 shy, no, not even 100, 60 million shy of half a billion in the first couple of days. Well... Okay, admittedly, with previews from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Four days. It's unheard of. It, it, this is one of the highest grossing movies ever for its opening weekend. We'll see if it lasts. Personally, I think the legs will last um, longer than a lot of other YouTubers are saying. Some people say, well, it's a flash in the pan. People will go see it. They'll laugh. They'll remember it. And then that'll be it. And it will crash down like 80% of the weekend. Personally, I don't think so. I myself am thinking pretty much daily that I'd like to see this movie again. So anyway, what does this mean in context then? Well, let's compare it. To, um, we can see, first of all, 438.3, so 440 million, okay? Opening weekend. Extremely impressive. Holding records now at the all-time domestic box office, uh, all-time uh, inflation-adjusted box office, all-time sequel box office, blah, 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 blah. Top 2024 movies. I mean, that that's, you know... Not a very deep pool of competition, let's put it that way. Unless you're a DreamWorks movie or something, you basically haven't even released this year. Okay, so, comparing it then, we can see Deadpool 1, 2, and 3. Deadpool 1 would be the blue line, came out, did very, very well for itself. Very well indeed. Looking here at... Uh, its original run, What at what point did it get to 205 million? Well, it was day, well, it was, it was day eight and a half, so let's say that. Whereas Deadpool and Wolverine official day three, even though it's been out for four, doing significantly better. Day 10 for Deadpool 2 before it passed that line. So Deadpool 2 did not make quite as much domestically as Deadpool 1. However, internationally, it did quite a lot better. So we saw that Deadpool 1, 781 million. Deadpool 2, 786 million. Deadpool and Wolverine, already over half of that in one weekend. Now, again, the legs will matter. Maybe it's just desperation on the part of the audience who just haven't seen anything good for a really long time. But uh, just to rub some extra salt in the wound and prove the point that I've been trying to make for years, make something freaking good and we will go to see it. Funny that, isn't it? If you build it, they will come. Anyway, 
Here's a comparison between Deadpool and Wolverine and the last, uh, what, five Marvel movies before that. And yeah, it actually has been this sporadic, the releases. It's kind of crazy to think. I've been doing this channel for two and a half years. And uh, that was when Thor Love and Thunder came out. Well, two years. So uh, Thor Love and Thunder, we are looking at it right now. July 8th, 2022, came out and made 760. Fair enough. Um, it's opening weekend, though, only 144, which people were saying was, was okay, but not great. And they tried to still blame it on COVID, but that was, of course, rubbish. Black Panther Wakanda Forever made a whopping 853 million. But of course, remember, none of these broke a billion. And it used to be almost guaranteed that a Marvel movie would, or at least would get damned close. But no, it's been years since a Marvel movie broke a billion. Black Panther Wakanda Forever, of course, would have been the beneficiary of one of the most absolutely astronomical marketing budgets that you've ever seen. Because, of course, they were pushing it for BLM and all of that stuff and trying to celebrate black people. Um, not that there's anything wrong with celebrating black people. Just celebrate everybody else equally, please. Um, and that's fine, but uh, there you go. And then, of course, we had Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, which was the first real big, undeniable disaster for Marvel, where nobody cared, nobody went to see it. I mean, okay, so obviously some people had to go see it, but globally it only made $463 million, which at the time was considered an absolutely pathetic showing for an MCU movie and an indication of really bad times coming. It picked up a little with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which, let me remind you, was the only movie released by Disney to make any money at all in 2023. Everything else lost money. They ended up dropping like a billion and a half. And then finally, the Marvels came out. With its ridiculous production budget alleged to have been $275 million, but we all know it was way more than that because of the extensive reshoots. And of course, that doesn't factor in marketing and distribution costs, bringing the budget up to well over $400 million, probably over $500 million. And uh, it made $199 million globally until it was pulled from theaters early. Ultimate MCU, ultimate feminism, and it tanked completely. Deadpool and Wolverine has already more than doubled the complete box office run of the Marvels in one weekend. Now, I don't know what the future holds for this movie. I would like to see it continue to do well. I would even be okay with seeing it break a billion dollars because, see, unfortunately, while I do despise Disney, perhaps they will actually learn something if they start to make money, but only from one specific kind of film. Or rather, avoiding one specific kind of film. Just get rid of the feminism, Disney. Anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to Will of the Fans for more of me, if you'd like to see that. And I'll, of course, be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, remember to question everything, respect the fans, check out the Discord, link in description, and I'll chat to you next time.